Number 63 in the Radiance range is Chao Patin. Uh, this is one of those movies that completely blew me away watching it. I was drawn in by the characters here. And for the longest while, it feels like <clears throat> there's not a great deal going on. Just two people kind of connecting. And these two people are uh, Benson's son, who is a small-time thief. <laughs> An almost kleptomaniac who makes his money by drug dealing, by stealing. Um, he gets around the city by constantly stealing bikes. One night, um, a bike that he's stolen is having a bit of a problem. He's got a lot of drugs in the bike. Police are following him. And he stops off at the garage near his house, petrol station, to um, just hide out the rain, hide from the police, and hopefully they'll just pass on by. Where he meets Lambert, uh, a man in his mid-fifties who does two things. He works night shift at this garage and drinks rum. And these two people... These two lost souls kind of connect. They just keep bumping into each other. They look forward to meeting each other. They have the conversations. Um, they have disagreements. You feel as if there is a kind of real connection there. There's not many other people in their life. This is some stability, some human connection. And you see them kind of form this bond. And it feels like it's going nowhere. And this is where I become... A little bit precious about the story of Chao Pantin because I feel it is a discovery. It's one where you don't really want to know where the movie is going to go. There are shocks, there are surprises, there is some action and this is an incredible movie. 94 minutes and it's wonderful. Sa moto, je t'avais dit de faire gaffe. By using the first third of the movie to deliver us real characters who become invested in flawed people. People who are not uh, the most well-rounded or best people on the planet. They've made mistakes, they've done bad things, they've hidden away from the world. And when injustices are delivered, they just can't stand by and watch it. Which I love about this one. And the character of Lambert, who you find out more about as the film goes on. Pourquoi vous n'avez rien dit? Rien dit quoi? Que vous aviez appartenu à la grande maison. Vous avez pu me dire ça, Monsieur Inspecteur. It's such a wonderful character. He's so quiet, unassuming. You don't learn much about him in the beginning of the movie. His tale unfolds in the final third where we learn more information and it adds to the story but even though we don't have that information at the start I still sympathised with this character this loneliness of this man who, who was just looking to eke out his days drinking and working and facilitating but he's got a good heart and I love that aspect of it there is a character that comes into it uh, midway through Lola, who I thought was just going to appear for a scene or two and disappear. She kind of makes a connection uh, with Ben Susan and that connection then grows on to Lambert as well and she becomes more than just a kind of quick love interest for one of the characters. Et alors, si t'en cascades, ça va faire une omelette. Non mais va te faire foutre pour qui tu me prends. Non mais je suis pas ta bonne, hein. Si tu veux te faire un œuf, t'as qu'à te le faire cuire tout seul. But all the way through this, there is a sense of dread and tension and sadness built into the film. It never feels like something is going to end up in any sort of a happy place. And when the film starts to allude to something positive later on, it almost feels unrealistic because the murkiness of this world feels like it's going to implode at some point for all the characters here. I loved it. Child Panting. It caught me off guard as I was not sure what I was going to get here. The character work is fantastic. I love the way it moves through uh, the streets um, of Paris here. I love the way because they have Bessusson on these various bikes seeing various locales. I loved Lola. She grew on me as a character. Lambert, I feel, is one of the best discoveries this year. 
a wonderful performance and a wonderful character come to life. And I, I can only say that this is a film you want in your collection, you need in your collection, you should definitely check out. But do yourself a favour and don't look at the synopsis. Don't look at where this is going to go. Uh, trust me on this one. It ends up in a great place and you want to go on that journey surprised uh, and along with the characters. So yeah, really surprised by this one. Absolutely adored that. Can't rave about it highly enough. Let's dive into the disc and have a look at the extras. Here we are in the disc for Chow Pantin. Let's go to the special features. First up we have Michael Abikassin, which was recorded in 2024. Scholar and French cinema expert introduces Chow Pantin exploring the significance of the film within French culture. Uh, I quite like this as a, a nice little introduction focusing on the characters of the story and the kind of impact that it had. Next, we have Once Upon a Time, Chow Pantin. In a documentary recorded for French TV in 2003, Serge Roulet explores the fascinating behind-the-scenes story of Chow Pantin, recovering covering the troubled personal lives of both star, Gloucher, and director Claude Berry, while he placed the film within the context of the febrile atmosphere of 1980s French politics. This is a terrific extra. Um, lots of people reflecting on the film of the sad story of the star, his background and where he came from before this film and why it was such an impactful performance. It's a great extra. Also included is a 24-page booklet, including a wonderful article called Cluch, the Sad Kind Clown, uh, which is a wonderful uh, bit of information following this actor who I had never heard of before, talking about what a wonderful performance and a breakthrough role this was, the history before this, and a kind of afterward of what happened in his career and a kind of sad demise that he had as well. Terrific article about a an artist who really made an impression in this film. And that's the extras for Chow Pantin. There we have it. Chow Pantin is out now. Like I said, you've got to get this one. It's wonderful. I would love to know your thoughts on this as well. Uh, if we're going to get into this uh, final two-thirds or whatever, uh, put a little spoiler notice so we don't give it away to other people where this one heads, but well worth your time. Uh, as always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff in the description box below or links to Patreon. Membership program, mandyfilm.com, always, in which you can support me. Thanks for watching. See you next time.